Behold my child. The Magi had come from the east, and entering the cave they found me, an infant with Mary, my virgin mother. Observe my heart and imitate its disposition. Such as it was in the presence of my own, such it is before strangers, as it was before shepherds of the lowest estate, so it is before Magi, of the highest rank. I was not ashamed of the lowliness of my birth, the obscurity of my condition, the practice of every virtue. In this my heart does not regard the judgments of men, but setting aside human respect, it pursues the things that pleases my father. Happy he that imitates his fortitude of my heart, that with his heart undaunted overcomes human respect. For as my heavenly father confessed me, because I confessed him, so whoever shall confess me before men, him also will I confess before my father. But woe to him that shall be ashamed before men of me, of my teaching, of my example. Of him will I also be ashamed before my father, the angels and men themselves, when I come in majesty to judge. What do you fear, O man? Does not reason itself tell you that honour is due to virtue, dishonour to vice? Why do you then dread to practise virtue, as if you thought it a disgrace? Behold, beside God, none witness your actions except angels and men. Now pray then, which of these should you mind? The good angels, if you boldly vow yourself my servant, will joyfully extol your great, the greatness of your soul and pray for the continuance of your fortitude and men as well as the saints in heaven as the wise and good upon the earth feeling similarly disposed in your regard will act in like manner. The retrobate angels and foolish and wicked men will admire you at least inwardly in spite of themselves although outwardly they speak against you to hide their own faint-heartedness and cowardice. Why should you heed the false judgments and idle talk of these? In doing so, would you not be reckoned among these and become a partaker of their lot? Were all men to talk about you, would you be different from what you are? You are arty just what you are before me. My child and the, the tongues of all creatures cannot make you greater or smaller. Who is he that can be pleasing to all? None. Neither could I myself obtain this. Do not then attempt what is impossible. Strive to please me as much as you are able, and in this holy endeavour care not what the world may think concerning you. If you are still guided by a regard for men, it is plain that you have not yet learned humility and charity of my heart. Whoever is humble of heart and impelled by divine love desires not to please men nor fears if he were to displease them, when he cannot otherwise satisfy me. Neither stands... He, in dread of the judgments and scoffs of the world, but he keeps his countenance and goes his way, and, if my honour requires it, he utters his opinion with a holy freedom. He does nothing that he may be seen. He admits nothing through fear of being seen. He cares not whether he be praised or blamed by a foolish world, whether he be esteemed much or little. The world is for him, as if it were not, me alone, he has in view, since he knows that to me everything is due. To me he loves to refer all, by whom alone he can and will be approved and rewarded as he deserves. But it is no wonder that whoever gratifies pride and self-love becomes a slave of human respect, for surely none is more a slave than he that is swayed by human respect, since he has as many masters as he sees men. Meanwhile, such a one will do nothing worthy of me, worthy of his own perfection. My child, wherever you may be, whether living in the world or secluded from the world, beware of human respect. This vice is met elsewhere and everywhere, not only among people of the world, but even among religious. From the world it enters into the sanctuary, and there it stands an abomination in the Holy of Holies. Many deceiving themselves under the resemblance of charity or prudence yield to human respect, and were they to look properly into themselves, they would discover that it is not the virtue of charity or prudence, but the veil of timid pride and self-love. Sometimes, my child, 
it is not expedient rashly to expose piety, piety. But never and nowhere is it allowed to betray piety. In the practice of virtue it is the sure and safe rule to consider not one's own but the divine honour, not to neglect the open profession of virtue, simply to avoid your own confusion, but to admit its open profession when my honour or glory might suffer in consequence. In general, my child, in whatever place you may be, if inasmuch as this rule allows, you begin at once openly to practice virtue, it will not only give me great honour, but also prove very advantageous to yourself. For thus the good and the wicked, as well as the fervent and the lukewarm, shall know you. The first will seek your company and sustain you. The last will leave you alone and not ensnare you. If any there be who do find fault with your conscientiously free and noble soul deportment, be not therefore troubled or cast down, but call to mind that if to those in jury of your conscience you did seek to please men, you should not be the servant of God, nor a disciple of my heart. Besides, what would it avail to be blamed by none and to be pleasing to all? Could you in the end be defended by mortal man when I will be your judge? Or could you be saved while I condemn you? What will be the feelings after death before me, their judge of those cowardly souls that through human respect placed you in life the opinions of a foolish world before my judgment and betrayed my cause? Alas, how many retrobates has human respect made, whose lot, had they spurned it, should now be among the saints? Believe me, child, it is every way better to regard my judgments rather than those of men. If you are pleasing to me, that is enough for you. To please men alone is simple vanity, mere mockery. Cheer up your courage, my child. Look down upon the false saying of men that fly through the air and only reach those who grasp them for themselves. If you do once fully learn to raise yourself above every human respect, you will hardly be again annoyed by it. And your self-consistent, you will pity the madness of the world and the silliness of men who suffer themselves in so slavish a manner to be dragged to destruction. And when you have come to this, that you are no longer moved by any human respect, then freed from a great hindrance to salvation and perfection, you shall safely advance in the way of virtue. <laughs>